Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Elizabeth Rogers. Could you take us into a typical day for you, Elizabeth? And I suppose I should say a typical day maybe where you are preparing to Mm -hmm. read a new project and a typical day where you are, in fact, in the studio because you told us in the espresso shots, you don't do the readings from home. So where you're in the studio doing the reading. What would we be seeing and hearing on those two different days if we were a fly on the wall? (laughs) Or a cat on my lap. Or a cat Um, on your lap. (laughs) My days are not typical. I'm a night owl, so I tend to work later in the day. And I often, depending on what it is I'm working on, if it's something that is not demanding a great deal of my focus, if I've already done the initial read through and I'm working on the research, Sometimes I'll have like a basketball game on television or a baseball game on television sort of in the background as I'm going through and looking up words and things like that. But I spend a lot of time sitting in my armchair in my living room reading and making notes and interspersed with everyday tasks like checking my email and paying my bills and cleaning my house and feeding myself. But there isn't a typical day in terms of that per se. Again, it depends on the book. But I get up, I do whatever I need to do, feed my cats, make my coffee, feed myself. And then I sit and I read and I make notes and do all the stuff that I was talking about earlier. I wish I were a little more disciplined than I am, but I make it work. (laughs) I wish that I could say I get up at 8.30 in the morning and I do my exercises and I have my coffee and then I sit down and I do X amount of work and then I have lunch and then I do this and then I do that. I don't, I am not very good about introducing a regimented schedule, but I also know that about myself and it's been many, many, many years. And so I know that the way I do it works for me and it wouldn't necessarily work for others. I know writers who say you have to treat it like a nine to five job where they get up and they go into the place where they write and they write all morning and then they have lunch and then they go back and they write all afternoon and then they have dinner. It's much less structured for me, not necessarily because I think that's the best way to do it, but that's just the way that I am. When I'm in the studio, again, it depends on which producer, publisher I'm working with. But for example, this last series of books, I've been doing several series of books for Blackstone and they have a studio here in the city. And the engineer that I work with there and my engineer director that I work with there is also not a morning person. So she says, we'll schedule whatever you can start whenever you like. She has some people who start at nine. She has some people who start at noon. I'll usually go in at 10 or 11 because frankly, vocally, it's very challenging to work first thing in the morning vocally. I'm sure there are people who don't have trouble with it. But for me, I need some time to sort of wake up. My vocal cords need to wake up and I need to warm up. And so I usually start around 10 or 11, which is typical of the studios in New York. And then I'll do my sort of warm up on the way to the subway. People think I'm crazy because I walk down the street blowing my lips. (laughs) <laughs> but um, you're in New York. I think yeah, nobody, I mean, it's people, funny. Nobody, like, oh, big deal. Yeah. No, exactly. It's like, they just look at me like, oh God, what is she doing? And then keep walking. So just to warm up my tongue and get things sort of moving. There are people who have much, much more intricate warm ups than I do. I'm, I'm very lucky. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm, I have been singing all of my life. I don't have to do a lot of crazy exercises and stuff to get myself ready to go. So I'll go into the studio and we will get our water and tea. And I usually have an apple because especially a tart apple or a green apple, if you start to get mouth noises, 
these are the things you have to think about. If you start to get noises, lip smacking, or there's like clicking that comes along with saliva noises in your mouth, or if your mouth gets dry. So I always have a lip balm in the studio with me and an apple to take a bite of or just to sort of sink your teeth into because it makes you salivate. It induces oh, saliva. So if you are getting clicky mouth noises and you take a bite of, of a tart apple, it will help the noises to go away. I also have, <laughs> although I've been told I'm not the worst, I, I sometimes have stomach noises. And so you often have to sort of have a pillow across your lap and always be listening for that and being aware that, oh, there goes my stomach. So we need to go back to the beginning of the sentence or paragraph. I don't always eat a big lunch on a normal day, but in the studio, I have to eat lunch because my stomach will start to make howling, growling noises. But then after lunch, you're dealing with digestive noises and the phlegm that is produced by eating anything for me. It doesn't matter what I eat. So this is the down and dirty, gross stuff that poor engineers have to listen to, the bodily noises that come out of people in the studio. <laughs> can, yes, but I I'm think sure that's so important to yeah. raise because these are things we wouldn't think about if somebody is doing, let's say, a radio show or even for me doing a podcast, I'm only talking for an hour or right. less than an hour because my guest is speaking. How long are you sitting in the chair when you get in there at 10 or 11? A typical session is usually from 10 to 4, 10 to 5, with breaks, obviously, and with a lunch break. But generally, six to seven hours in the studio, which is a lot of talking. And it is absolutely wearing. And again, I think there's a difference just vocally between men and women, because I know people who can go for more hours than that. And I know people who can do five hours straight of eight hours a day. I have done it, and I can do it. But it is very difficult. It's really exhausting. And you begin to feel it vocally and you begin to hear it vocally. So I like to do six or seven hours, two or three days, and then take a day off and then come back for another two or three days. I just finished a huge collection of short stories that's about 20 hours long. And we were doing it over the holidays. So it worked out because it's short stories. It worked out well because I could do one day here and then another day here and then plug in around the holidays. Normally, I don't like to do that because you lose the flow of the story. So I like to do a book sort of in one piece, like without working on two things at the same time, although sometimes you have to. Right. Because just like anything, if you're acting... <laughs> Right. If you're yeah. on stage acting a role, getting in and out of character takes quite a bit of focus and mm -hmm. energy. Yeah, exactly. And even at the end of the day, even you finish a day of recording and the next morning you come in, I have to listen to how I finished the day before so that I can try to match the tone and the energy when I'm beginning the next day so that it isn't like obvious, like, oh, she's getting tired. She's getting tired. Oh, that must have been the end of a day of recording. And the next day you start with all this bright, perky energy. And it's like, you need to keep in mind the overall flow, the overall arc of the book, of the story, whatever it might be, and try to keep that flow going. And that's a lot harder when it's interrupted. But it's also, you know, you need to schedule time off for your voice. And for your brain. It's very, as you said, it's very, very intense focus. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee. 24-7, no matter where you live. I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.